WCLN 1170 Radio and Starvision Cable Channel 16 are pleased to present We Should Know, hosted by J.W. Simmons, an upbeat, informative look at people, places, and issues facing our community. This education-based analysis of issues will remain positive and informative as we consider closely what we should know. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you for being with us today. It's Tuesday, each and every Tuesday. We Should Know is on there. Coming to you on Channel 16 Star Communications. We're simulcast WCLN Radio out of Clinton, North Carolina. We cover about eight or ten counties here in the eastern part of the state. Uh, we also uh, reprint a summation of this program each week in the Sampson Weekly newspaper. We try to keep you abreast of not only the breaking news items, but things that's important to you and things you need to know about. Therefore, the name of the program is We Should Know. So we up front, ask you to call a friend, tune in, and I thank you for your comments from last week uh, to my email and uh, continue to send those email addresses. We've got a very interesting program today. One of those um, shows I like to do, we have with us Matt uh, Register. Matthew, uh, I, I've kind of known you and your family for some time, the father, uh, Tim, and a lot of folks know Tim from the public school system, and uh, of course now Sampson County Board of Education. I uh, congratulate him on uh, that effort. I uh, want to start out with talking about small business, uh, and you're in the midst of what I would term as a vortex right now, 800,000 yeah. plus small businesses in North Carolina. A huge part of the economy of the country is small businesses. Um, and, and you started a business in uh, 2010. As a small business owner now, tell us what some of the significant challenges you've had from the inception of your small business uh, and some of the things that you see were just uh, unbelievably rewarding. And then I want to get into exactly what it is. But I'll go ahead and tell folks, we're talking about Southern Smoke Barbecue. If you hadn't heard of that, then you might have been under a rock for the past few years. So I'll just go ahead and... Uh, well, I think some of the most significant things were um, staying true to our brand and defining what we were. Um, and I, I, it's hard for me to say that we're a company, but I guess we are. Um, you know, and and concept to where we are now. Mm -hmm. You know that that's the 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 hardest part. Some mm -hmm. of the hardest part, and making the right decisions, and financially and for the business. You know, because one bad misstep with a small business could really hurt you. You know, in in the long run. But we've been very fortunate. We're dealing with now growing. Um, like a lot of small businesses, we're in that very tricky stage where we're growing so fast. Mm -hmm. um, I never expected two years ago when we opened our storefront that we would have people all the way, mm -hmm. you know, from all over North Carolina coming in the Garland, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that was one of the most significant things. And then finding good employees. Um, and I have been extremely blessed with finding the right people and the right kids to surround myself with and them embracing not just the job, but embracing Southern Smoke as a brand. And as I refer to them as my kids, mm -hmm. because all of our employees now are, are like kids. They're part of our family. And they are as much a, a part of how we've grown as I am. You know, they, it's all, we've grown together and we still learn together. You know, that's one of the biggest the, the biggest things that has really helped us, you know, small business wise. One of the things when I hear you, hear you talk and having been around you sometime, I, I hear some of those uh, uh, Southern principles of, of faith and family Absolutely. coming forward. And, and to, to look at barbecue in the South, it, it almost runs hand in hand because I it think of, of church dinners, I think of, uh, of barbecue, I think of all of those kinds of things that has, has historically been part of, especially of southeastern North Carolina and North Carolina as a whole. So when you, when you started into this process and thinking about it, uh, let's first of all kind of talk about that vision because I know one of the uh, articles that, that I read and when I look at small business development, they, they, they say examine your vision. Uh, restaurant business, hospitality business is one of the most, um, I guess, tremendously uh, burdensome in a way people would say. Uh, work intensive, you literally have to live it. So you, talk to us about how you moved to that vision of what you were doing. We, um, it, it's extremely, it's kind of a unique story. This this whole process started as a hobby. Mm -hmm. um, and 
the, it snowballed. I mean, it really did. Uh, it started out as people calling me saying, hey, we're having a few friends over. Can you cook a, you know, can you cook some barbecue mm -hmm. for us? And I did. And then all of a sudden, we started getting phone calls every week. Hey, we're having a family reunion. Will you cook a pig mm -hmm. for us? And then I, I decided, hey, maybe we need to open up storefront. Um, but barbecue is very polarizing mm -hmm. in North Carolina. That's one of the things throughout the nation, no matter where you go, we're known, when it comes to food, we're known mm -hmm. for sustainable seafood mm -hmm. and barbecue. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and the vision started out as, I would pretty much say if you look at our restaurant now, my vision three or four years ago, this is, it's exactly what my vision was. Um, I wanted a old school Southern barbecue joint. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. we have no indoor seating, it's all outdoor. Mm -hmm. You come pick up. Um, I wanted to see anybody from doctors to lawyers to guys that work on a hog farm or the trash guy to be sitting together having lunch. Mm -hmm. um, our menu has evolved and is still evolving. I didn't expect for my menu to get as big as it has. Um, and I want to talk about that later on too and get yeah. into some depth because I was blown away <laughs> at that menu. Man, some of the stuff on there you probably have to help me with yeah, identify. Yeah, but um, you know, we are still growing. You know, we are still in that growing stage of, of what we want to be. Um, I want to be, and I've said this on numerous occasions, I wanted to open a place that not only the people in Garland would be proud of, mm -hmm. but the people in Sampson County would be proud of. When they would go somewhere, if you're in in Goldsboro, somewhere eating, and they say, oh, you're from Sampson County, that's where Southern Smokey is. Mm -hmm. I wanted you to be proud of that. Mm -hmm. And that has kind of snowballed into our employees and our brand, that mm -hmm. we don't want to just be another barbecue place. We want to be Sampson County and Garland's barbecue place mm -hmm. that people say, oh yeah, I've eaten there, I've known their family. You know, we want, I wanted to build my business on the customers and the people of Sampson County. You know? if, if there's people out there listening, and, and there may be a number of people, because as you know, oftentimes folks either are looking at a job, they don't have a job, right. and they're thinking, well, maybe I can start a business somehow, mm -hmm. and maybe I can get into that, particularly the hospitality food business. Right. What would you advise them if, they're, if they have that seed thought in their mind, well, I can, I can do, I don't know, hot dogs somewhere, right. I can sell something. What would you tell them to start with, to start thinking about if they're thinking about the food service industry? Absolutely. One, if you don't have any food service experience, they need to go get some. You need to go get in a kitchen. You need to understand um, our hours are a little different. Ours are our hours in the middle of the night and early in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, most traditional restaurants are you go in at 12 and you get off at 12, you know, and they need to go understand that. But um, they need to do kind of like I did. I, I thought my barbecue was good. I didn't know how good it was. So I started giving it to people. Mm -hmm. And uh, you give it to people and you might be a great cook for your family, but go give it to people that are complete strangers. Mm -hmm. And that's when you'll get a true gauge. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've talked with several people that have thought about being in the food business and I say, you may like food, you may love food, but you have to be almost obsessed with food um, in order to do things the way personally I feel like you should, you should be doing them. Um, you know, no canned vegetables. You know, we go and put vegetables up or we go to a local farmer and, and get what we can. And, and that's not for everybody, but that's just the way I wanted to build my business. Mm -hmm. I wanted to feed people the way my grandmother cooked and the way her mother cooked. And we've done a pretty good job of that. When you look at that, folks will probably be wanting to know, well, if I get into that, can, can I get into it and maybe pull somebody else in to take care of it for me to try to get it started? And what I hear you saying is you need to really be immersed in, in everything if it in comes to clean the pots and pans, in to cook aspect. in the product to, before you even step across that line. In, in every aspect. Um, because you, you see so many times restaurants fail uh, they have a great concept, the owner has a lot of passion. Six months in, they hire a bunch of kitchen staff and they quit being there. Mm -hmm. You know, um, one of the local examples of this is ribeyes. 
when you walk in realize most of the time either Trey or Kristen is in there. That's correct. Um, you walk in our restaurant, I'm there. Mm -hmm. You know, you walk into Sandpiper, Keith is there. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we, a lot of people see it on TV and think, oh, I can hire a head chef, I can hire all these people. You still need to be there, you know. And um, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes folks make um, in the restaurant business is they quit being there. You know, this is almost like a child. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be hands-on and you have to know every aspect of your business. Um, and that's one thing that I have really had to learn um, is knowing, I knew the cooking side, but the paperwork side, the scheduling side, the ordering side, you know, the constant keeping up with people, you know, and, mm -hmm. and because I want everybody to have a perfect customer service experience when you walk in with us. and. And if you're not there, you can't do it, you know. And and you need advice I would give to somebody thinking about opening. You need to be willing to, you're going to miss football games. You're going to miss going out with your friends. You know, you're going to miss those things. And and you need to really think about those kind of things before you, before you get down the road. Um, because your restaurant is your business, you know. And... Um, there's lots of times that my family would like for me to be home on Saturday night, but I'm in Wilmington or I'm in Raleigh catering, you know, and, and that's just, and that's part of it. And not every business is like that, but in the in the food and hospitality business, that's, you work when everybody else is off. One of the things I want to do, and, and we're going to take a break now, but coming back from break, I, I want to talk a bit about this portability of business and being able to have not only a, a business at a location, like for example in, in a small town like Garland, but to be able to have that business be present in other places, and you mentioned Wilmington, Raleigh and other places, is really moving to that point now, and how do you juggle all those things? So we'll be back after this uh, commercial break from our sponsors. We want to thank each and every one of the sponsors of this show that helped pay the bills. Uh, we'll be back in a moment. We'll ask you to call a friend. If you think about getting into business somewhere, we'll get some good advice this morning. We'll be back in a moment. You're out for an evening on the town. Finally a chance to relax and forget that you left your front door completely unlocked. Fortunately, you just installed a security system from Star Communications. With just your cell phone, you can check on your house, lock it down, light it up, and get back to relaxing. He forgot to put Buster in his crate. Unfortunately, we can't help with that. Security and automation from Star Communications. Call today to find out more. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you for being with us today. I also want to thank you again for emailing us at we should know edu at gmail.com. That's we should know edu at gmail.com. I thank you for your comments on past shows, your suggestions for future shows, and folks that you might want to know more about or subjects you might want to have more information about from the people that's actually out there in the field, as we say in Eastern North Carolina, each and every day making those things happen. Today we're talking with Matthew Register, who happens to be the owner, and I should say operator, of Southern Smoke Barbecue. Matthew, we were talking about the intensity of folks that might be going into that business, and I want to uh, speak specifically to the hospitality food business. Uh, the speed of that, not only in functionality, but expectation. You know. You, I think you, and we're going to talk later also about some of the expectation, but that expectation that you have set is um, one that has some uniquenesses to it. Um, so you, you buy local stuff, you mentioned it a while ago, you have it prepared, you've got a certain way that you cook, you have had folks sample the product, and clearly somebody likes it because you're, you're literally, uh, uh, you, yeah. you come have to come up for air frequently. Um, talk to us about that, uh, I mean sometimes people get behind the curve on this speed of moving forward and they get lost. How do you gauge that as a business owner? Well, continuously I have to stay true to who I am and what the brand three or four years ago that I set out to do, I have to stay true to that and, and I have to constantly say to myself, you know, remember, this is who you are. Mm -hmm. um, and I think people, sometimes in the food business, business gets a little bit slow. Uh, you start panicking a little bit. Mm -hmm. You start saying, okay, I can cut corners here and maybe save a little bit of money here, but then your food quality drops down. Or 
you say, I may not need all these employees. You start cutting people. Well, then you've got employees that you're overworking, and they're not as happy to walk in your door every day to work and to do what you need them to do. And uh, we have not hit a plateau, but I'm looking six, eight, ten months down the road, what if we hit a plateau? And I've already started thinking about those things. Mm-hmm. And, and I think as a business owner, if you're not looking a year, a year and a half ahead of problems that could arise, you're in trouble. You know, um, Last year this time, uh, one of my focuses was to kind of evolve our menu mm-hmm. and be more unique and do things. And that's what we've done. Mm-hmm. You know, this next year is going to be pushing the envelope even more, but also figuring out how do we grow? How do we grow at a normal rate and not go out and hire 25 people and buy tons of equipment and spend lots of money and the business doesn't? You know, and, and we have to, you have to, you have to really micromanage mm-hmm. every aspect. One of the things that strikes me as, as important in two aspects, especially with small business, and, and particularly uh, according to the research as it relates to hospitality food service, is, is this whole idea of, of social skills, i.e. also including a social media Absolutely. networking skills. Those, it seems to me, you've mastered pretty good going into this thing, and particularly I want to spend that, this conversation toward the, that whole aspect of the millennials uh, versus other generations, because you're, you're tapping into a number of different markets, uh, particularly um, those folks that uh, my age and older, you've got uh, connectivity through media with the millennials, they get it. Uh, talk to us about that and how, how important is that to this type of business or to any business, really. Right. Um, we, I've realized Jessica and I both are not too old not to understand social media. Now, there are some aspects of social media I don't understand, but I have employees that I can hand them my phone and say, show me how to do this. Yeah. Um, you know, it is a growing trend. You have a cell phone in your pocket. Mm-hmm. You have Facebook on mm-hmm. it. You have Instagram. You don't always have your computer there, but you've got your phone with you. Mm -hmm. Which is, in essence, a computer. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, we try to keep things cool, fresh, you know, on our social media sites. Um, But uh, at the click of a button, we can reach almost 10,000 people now um, with our social media. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You know, I can put, we put up on Thursdays and Fridays what we're going to have on the menu. And I click that button, and I reach every one of those people every moment. There's, there's, there's not many other things that you can do to, to reach out and mm-hmm. touch people that quickly. Um, but social media has put us on a stage, not just locally, but statewide and in mm-hmm. the South. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have followers from, well, we have followers all over the world. Um, in fact, we were in a magazine in England last week that the people found out about us through Instagram and social media. And they came, they were doing a barbecue tour. I mean, otherwise they would have never found us on social media. You, you just hit on something and I want to I want to move into that direction. So it's <laughs> interested in, in this conversation and, and this is just kind of the way this show goes. But, but this idea of, of distance and, and compatibility and quality and those kinds of things, it, it, at some point in time, small businesses have to accept well, we're moving to a point that we either want and use the word plateau we either want to plateau and hold ourselves to this location or we've got to go to stage two which may be even a grander stage and, and right. you touched on it I wanted to go there so I'm, you touched on this export deal um, now we're living in a, in a place you can literally get ice cream from some other Absolutely. state and delivered to your door. Yeah. So where are you at with that thought and is that something that's crossed your uh, screen yet? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, we have been in talks with um, some some friends of ours about some of our barbecue sauces being sold in places like India, mm-hmm. um, which is a huge food market. There's a lot of, you know, that's a, India is a big food. Tremendous, food, yeah, billions um, of people. And 
you know, we've shipped, we've already started shipping our barbecue all over the South. We've, we've shipped as far as Oklahoma, all the way up to Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a part of the business we haven't really grown. It's just like our sauce business. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wanting to focus all my time on catering and the restaurant. Uh, but it, it is it's very tricky because we live in a day and age now where uh, you could place an order in England and have it in a couple of days. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. You know, and I never expected people in England to know where Garland was or, or about Southern Smoke, but that is one aspect that we're really having to kind of focus on. And do you want a plateau? You yeah. know, right now, me sitting here, I don't want a plateau. I still think we can get on a grander and a bigger stage. Now, uh, you talk about growing. One of the constant questions we get is, when are you gonna open up a second location? Mm -hmm. I'm only one person. Mm -hmm. I cook everything in a restaurant. Um, and until I find somebody that would possibly be, I would feel comfortable, we're not open a second mm -hmm. location because we get that question asked about eight or nine times a day. Mm -hmm. uh, we have people from Raleigh, Wilmington, Goldsboro, places like that. And they well, say, look, accessibility, I think, is important too. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and for, for you, storefront is important. Absolutely. Whereas maybe if you were in a tech business, you could ship or market in, in, out of a back room somewhere. Absolutely. But storefront, I think, is important. How important is it for you to maintain that, uh, what I call that small town southern character? Very uh, important. It, it's one of the most important things we do. Um, I want to be identified with the town that I'm in. Uh, I love where I live, you know, and, and when we were opening, I, all over, people would look at me and say, you're opening a place in Garland? Mm -hmm. On I'm, Warren Street? Uh, not even on the main road yeah, exactly. at an old fish market. You got to turn left. Yeah, and, um, and that is one of the most important things mm -hmm. about our business is I want our business, no matter where it goes, five, six, you know, 10 years down the road, I want it to always be identified with Garland uh, because that's home, that's where I want to build my business. And what I'm hoping is three or four years down the road, there's gonna be another business owner that's gonna say, hey, they did it in their town, why can't I do it in my town? Why can't I open up my own business? Because we suffer in Eastern North Carolina, everybody moved away in small towns and they never moved back, so they're dying. But if I can, if there's one guy that walks in my door and he lives in the you know, northeastern corner of North Carolina, mm -hmm. and he says, you know, my town's about this size, I could go open up a little restaurant or I could open up whatever my passion is and I can make it if I follow what they're doing. And that, that would be the most rewarding thing to me, is to see people, or to see my kids say, well listen, you know, dad's made a, you know, has built a business here, we're not gonna move to Raleigh. We're not gonna move to Wilmington. We're gonna stay here in Garland and hopefully take the burden off mm -hmm. of daddy because mm -hmm. by the time they're old enough to take it over, there's no telling mm -hmm. what my mm -hmm. body's going to be. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to get out of bed in the mornings now. But well, you're putting in those hours now that, that hopefully is planting seeds for your future. Absolutely, and, and, but I want it to feel, I want you to feel, no matter if we open up multiple locations, I want you to feel a little bit of Garland and a little bit of our business the way it is now in every location. Um, and how we do that, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, one thing we have built on is being friendly. Mm -hmm. You know, telling people you appreciate. That's back to those coming. social skills. That Absolutely. I think we'll go and, one -on -one. and and my luckily I have my parents working uh, in the front, and they know a lot of people. But even my employees, if you see somebody and you know them, call them my name. Tell them thank you. You know, and we've gotten away from that. That's a big thing that, that small businesses can really hit on is thank you for coming. Because I tell everyone, when I interview somebody to work for us, I say, listen, they don't have to, they don't have to come eat with us. Keep that thought, we're gonna follow up and we come back. It's very important issues that you need to know uh, if you're looking at going into a small business. We'll be back in a moment, call a friend.
Whether it's video, voice, internet, or cellular, Star Communications connects you to the things you love. It's what we do and have done for over 50 years. Star Communications, your local technology company. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. WCLN Radio, Star Communications, Channel 16, Tuesdays at 2.30 each and every Tuesday. Replay 7 p.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday on your TV channel, 16 Star Communications. I want to thank all of those folks that mention us on the radio. I do this each and every week. They talk about us. i got to give them a little, little uh, support there uh, from our show, Robert Stroud with the Boogie Shoes Radio Network. Of course, Wayne Weeks with the Gospel Hour each and every day. Tommy the Fly in the afternoon. I uh, can't say enough about Nicole and the country story and what she does. And the morning uh, crew with, uh, with uh, Grandpa uh, Pat Pat and uh, Nolan Z. Uh, and the L Man, we appreciate you mentioning this show each and every week. We're talking about small business. We're talking with Matthew Register, aka Matt, uh, Southern Smoke Barbecue, a unique niche in the area. And uh, we were talking about this idea of how a small business sells itself through the personality of the small business. One of the things I thought was interesting in, in your commentary as you are reaching continually, it appears to be growing. You have gone beyond that uh, dynamic of, I guess, uh, of, of whether you're going to make it or not. It's like, how do I slow down enough to keep going? So when we look at that, and you mentioned uh, kind of the idea, and I'll use this word, of cloning yourself somewhere. Uh, <laughs> at some point in time, that decision will have to be made because if you continue to grow, and the number of people that ask you when, when we're looking for another storefront. How, how do you look at that? Do you look at it from the perspective of, um, you know, where, where you brand yourself in the sense of you're still involved in the ownership and you're at that restaurant maybe this day of the week or the next day of the week if you're at that restaurant? Or do you look at it in the sense that, that you kind of do like the McDonald's and other places where you franchise it out? Have you, have you looked at it from that perspective? And what well, should a business do? Well, we, of course, I don't talk about it openly, mm -hmm. but it is in the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not sure if I want to go the McDonald's, franchising yeah. it out. Um, I'd like to still be directly involved, um, not necessarily with day-to-day -day operations, but having my finger on it. Mm -hmm. Because this has been mine and Jessica's and, both, and my parents now I've put my blood, sweat, and tears into this, into that oak tree, that mm -hmm. brand. Mm -hmm. um, and so it is a very tricky thing. Uh, at some point, I know that I will not be able to be the one behind that stove. Uh, and, and it's a scary, very, very scary situation. Yeah. And that time um, comes faster than oftentimes you anticipate. It has, it has, and we're starting to face where Matt can always be at everything. Mm -hmm. um, and I have, especially with our catering schedule, I have, I have to sit down with people and say, listen, I cannot promise you that I will be at your event. I will cook your food. And, and that's one of the scary, you know, things that we're weaving our way through is how can I do everything? Uh, but one of the things I have started realizing, like our employees, I have to surround myself with great people. Mm -hmm. And if it takes me searching or slowing things down and, and really finding the right people, that's what I'm going to have to do. Um, because I have surrounded myself with wonderful people. But I also have to lean on other chefs, mm -hmm. um, people that have been in the business a long time. I, I've become really good friends with some very, very successful restaurateurs, mm -hmm. people that have been on TV, and mm -hmm. um, they understand of the dynamic of having a family, having a small family, having a restaurant, being pulled, in, and I have to lean on those people. Um, but I've also just kind of got to put my faith, yeah. you know, in, in the direction and the path we're going to be led on. Um, Did you anticipate uh, when you started with this and, and one of the things that's often talked about, especially with restaurant businesses, is this idea of discipline, that you would be so disciplined, and this is something you imposed on yourself. How do you explain that to folks that are thinking about going into a business, and maybe it is the restaurant business, 
how critical that discipline is. And and I you know I've heard you we've talked about this off air, uh, and I and I've heard heard it come through many times. There's things that I know that you do regularly, and we've talked about those 12 and 18 hour days, and it just comes down to to making sure that you've got that beyond passion, if you will. That's exactly right. Um, I truly love what I do. I, I love every aspect of it. Now, do I like being at the restaurant at 4.30 in the morning after you've come off of a catering and you get home at 10? No. Do I like Saturday mornings, you know, spending time with my daughter and she's in the restaurant with me? Um, so we can spend a little bit of time together. I don't like those aspects of it, but I love what I do. I am, uh, my wife, if you talk about discipline, would laugh because I'm not a super organized person. Mm -hmm. I'm a more of an outside the box thinker um, mm -hmm. and I'm not very organized. I, I, they fuss all the time because I know what's going on, but I hadn't relayed to everybody else mm -hmm. what's going mm -hmm. on. Um, but you do have to be disciplined. You have to know. I mean, you have to know, no matter what's going on, at eight o'clock, I've got to be at the restaurant, the light fires to get barbecue started. At five o'clock, you got to get up. There's no, I'm gonna sleep in for 45 minutes to an hour, or I just don't feel good. I'm not going in. There's there, no, there's no there taking is, something out of a box that's frozen and tossing it on there and saying we're going to cook this and put it not. in front of people. Absolutely not. We're talk, We're literally talking hours of preparation. Yeah, you're you're talking about. Um, we start at anywhere from 7:30 to 8 o'clock the night before any catering we're doing for with barbecue involved, and you up and down part of the night, and uh, you. You walk back in about five thirty six o'clock, and you get going, you know, and, and it is a grind. Um, but I think that's part of one of the things I like about it. It is just you get in there, you get your work done, you're going to be tired. You know, there's some Sunday nights or Sunday mornings that you can barely get out of bed, um, but you get up, you know, and, and you have to. You know, it's just, it's just part of being passionate about something. I mean, passion just can't be stressed enough. Even if you think you like it, you just have to be borderline, like we taught, almost obsessed with it. You, you're you're uh, obviously a, a, a sociable, interactive kind of person. You enjoy that kind of thing. You, you have folks that have visited your restaurant. You have folks that have, you talked about you ship food to. What kind of uh, commentary is people making to you beyond just saying, well, when are you going to open up another location? What are they saying that they'd like to see you do? They would like to see you do different, or they would like to see you add more of, or maybe not do as much of. What What are the, the pluses and minuses as far as feedback you're getting? One of the things we're faced with now is trying to get everybody served that won't steep. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're trying as hard as we can to have enough food. Um, and it's a good problem to have, but we're still running out of food with people in line. And as a business owner, that hurts um, because it's not something that we can go microwave mm -hmm. or we can throw on a flat top. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is 13 hours. I can't, I can't just, and I, and I refuse to do that. Mm -hmm. um, there, I'm not gonna serve not fresh, straight off the pit, straight off the chopping box. Barbecue. I'm just not. Well, that would that would violate your your well, key just, principle value. I absolutely, think is. absolutely. And um, people would like to see us open more, uh, but I'm only, I tell them, and, and it's hard for them to understand. They only they see we're only open two days a week, mm -hmm. but they also don't see the two or three days catering we're on. Um, I'm only one person, you know, and that goes back to finding the right people, and me eventually having to find somebody that can help me do what I do. Um, but that's one of the main things. And I'm hoping with our new food truck that we're gonna be able to get, especially some of our Sampson County people, their taste of Southern smoke on another day of the week. Um, that's one of the main things, the reasons why we're doing a food truck is so we can open up in a different location and service some of the people that can't get to Garland by two o'clock. 
you know, it, you know that's that's one of the main reasons why we're doing the food truck. Is that's like us opening another day, but we're not opening Garland. Mm -hmm. um, so if you only have a 30-minute lunch break, you can run out, grab a barbecue sandwich, a side, and a drink, and and carry it back to your office. Well, one of the things I want to talk about uh, too is is kind of drill into some of these new things you're doing. I want to talk about some of the recipes and those things uh, because I'm, I'm, I was just blown away uh, when I looked at that. Just kind of a quick wrap where we've been to this point. We've talked a lot about how you got into it. We've talked about some of the challenges of that business. Obviously, I hear you saying the rewards is not only being involved in the process of what the product is, but the interactivity and the, the exchange back and forth. Where is your market base when you think market base now, both age-wise and demographic? Is it is it more uh, males, females? It's, is it six to eighteen? Is it thirty to fifty? What where, where do you see? It's that? all over the board. That's the beautiful thing yeah. about um, you know it's you got uh, high school students on on days that they're not in school rushing in, you know hoping that we've got a little bit of barbecue left. We've got people that are retired. We've got a couple that lives in Newburn. They drive once a month to Garland. They're retired, they just take a little road trip. So it that's really is. That's their treat, is. yeah. Yeah, and it really is, and that's rewarding. To think about somebody getting in their car at eight o'clock in Newburn, North Carolina, and driving to eat my food in, in Garland. I mean, that's, it's unheard of. That's that's phenomenal. To, you know, um, and we're not serving high end food. This is just, you know, barbecue. You know, that's what I tell people. So, but, but it has a certain uniqueness. To it, it does. It does, and, and that is a huge reward. We're going to take a break. We'll come back for for our last segment, and I want to get in a lot of information on that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us. Stay tuned because when we come back, we're going to find out who or what Jezebel is. We'll be back in a moment. What, what, how can that be? The way someone broke in and stole my TV. Unless I want to install steel bars, I call it experts in security. Star, Star Communications is the one that I can trust to get the job done. Yeah, the only thing worse than that is not feeling safe in your own home or business. Call Star Communications now. We're your local security experts, from alarms and monitoring to automation and personal protection. Word. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you for being with us today. We're talking with Matthew Register. We're talking about Southern Smoke Barbecue. Matthew, I want to start out on this last segment. Who or what is Jezebel? And for goodness sakes, how did that name come about? Uh, Jezebel was is our first pit that we had built. Um, I designed it. Jessica's uncle built it. And there's a blues group from Greensboro mm -hmm. named uh, WSMB. And it, was, it started out as a joke. Um, always seemed like when we were lighting fires, we had that album playing. Mm -hmm. And there's a song on there called Jezebel. And it's about a voodoo uh, witch doctor down in Louisiana. <laughs> and we would joke that Jezebel was kind of, if she wanted to work just right, she'd fire right up yeah. and pits would be perfect. And then some days it would just be, so we would start calling her Jezebel because she's kind of like a voodoo witch yeah. doctor. <laughs> um, but yeah, and that just kind of, the name stuck. And um, then we added with the blues theme, uh, we added Etta and Big Maybell. Um, are also two of our pits. Which saying Big Bay Mail seems to me that things are getting larger yeah, and business is yeah, growing. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but Jezebel is like a member of the family. Um, we we do a lot of caterings with it, um, and it, but it's always special uh, when I stand in front of that firebox mm -hmm. um, because that is really where it all started. Uh, and. Whew, yes, it, 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 it brings back memories. Yeah, so. it does because there's been a lot of long cold nights where I've stood by myself and stared at a fire and I would have never guessed in a million years those nights that I was trying to perfect and hone what I do that I would be on the stages I am now. 
Let's talk about barbecue just for a minute. In, in North Carolina, even just North Carolina, but over the country, there's a lot of different barbecues. Right. North Carolina, there's a significant different barbecues. <laughs> and you mentioned the sauces, yeah, first absolutely. of all, that you come up with. A lot of it has to do with the sauces, vinegar-based sauces, tomato-based sauces, those kinds of things. But the, the wood-cooked, oak wood-cooked barbecue, a lot of folks, if they taste that, it, it, there's a uniqueness to it that comes from the wood rather than absolutely. what typically is done, which is gas grills. Yeah, absolutely. We see those everywhere. You, you can't hide that flavor. And when I have old timers walk in and they eat my barbecue and they walk in and they say, I hadn't tasted barbecue like that in 40 years. Well, a lot of people because probably they, never tasted that. Yeah, and they got away, we got away from it because we do live in a microwave world. We do. Where things are easier. We do. Um, stoking fires, running pits, there's nothing easy about it. And there's a reason why wood cooked barbecue places are dying out um, because it's just so labor intensive. Well, yeah, I mean, it's and I mean, we've tried to. I even I'm so locally sourced with our stuff. We get our wood from Sampson County. You know, we try to find oak wood within 15, 20 miles of Garland. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we use a mixture. We mainly use white oak, but sometimes I'll use a little bit of blackjack. But yeah, it is a unique flavor and. It's a tricky situation. Sometimes you can get too much smoke in it, and it's overpowering. Mm -hmm. um, and I've found the balance mm -hmm. of where there's just enough, but you still taste vinegar-based sauce, a little bit of pork, a little bit of smoke. And that's, that's one of the hardest things about barbecue is making it taste the exact same every day because no pig is the same. And no piece of wood is the same. So, so somebody could would it be uh, would this be correct to say that somebody may get a barbecue sandwich at your place uh, one week, the next week there may be a little bit different taste in the flavor as far as smoke or less smoke. No, or, we pretty much you got it pretty much under control. The, yeah, I mean I can look at um, wood and know how much smoke it's gonna it's gonna put on the on the shoulders, and you look at size, you look at fat content. I mean it's. It's almost a science, yeah. I and mean, I'm not a scientist. You got, but you got to tweak it to yeah, make sure do. there's consistency. So. Yeah, yeah, and and that's one of the biggest things. I want the first barbecue sandwich to taste like the last barbecue sandwich going out, you know, and and that's tricky. It really is tricky. I, I've got to ask you this question because if I don't, I know I'm going to get some emails and comments from people. Uh, you, you've done all kinds of cooking. You're literally now traveling at different places, yeah. food shows, in state and out of state. Where did these cooking skills come from? Is this something? Did you go to some culinary no, school, or, uh, or you just I, having to pick it up? Somebody? I have I have no culinary training. Uh, I'm married into a family of Italians that are amazing cooks. My wife is probably all around is probably a better cook than I am. Uh, and you know, my grandmother was a home ec teacher. My is mom there such a, a thing as fettuccine barbecue? I don't know. I'm just yeah, we like probably yeah. of course we've thought about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I just picked it up, and I have a. I guess I'm lucky. I, you know, I have a really. I can pick out things. Mm -hmm. um, and listen, everything I do doesn't work. Uh, there's a lot of things behind the scenes that people see that I that don't see mm -hmm. that just didn't work. Uh, but I just have a good palate. I have a knack for it. But I think about it. I think about, okay, this is what's coming up, what we're going to get from farmers. How can we make it unique? How can I take the way my grandmother made cream corn and put my own spin on it and do it differently? You know, yeah. with adding fresh basil and, you know, a different type of cream, you know, and, and that's, that's a lot of where my cooking, and I'm still learning. Honing those skills. I'm still learning who I am as a chef and as a cook. Um, I mean, I, I really am, uh, and that's... Well, clearly you have an innate, innate talent to do that <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. So what I want to do now, I want to talk a little about because I looked at, at two, two other things. First of all, you mentioned a while ago the food truck. Right. The other thing I know that, that you have mentioned is that you have, let's call them flash mobs for, for lack of a better word. You'll have these things where you cook and... Our, yeah, tell, tell us how South, that works. Our South Supper Series. Yeah, talk um, about how that these works. These are uh, ticketed events. You don't know when the tickets are going to be released. You got to be on email. Though. You have to be on an email list. You do not have any idea when the the menus will come out. And as soon as the menus come out, you have to call right then and get your tickets. This this one we're doing in two weeks sold out in three hours. 
Yeah, I've heard you uh, say that's amazing. Yeah, it really is. And this, we theme them. I theme them all. My first one was my favorite foods from the South. Um, our last one was a night in the Low Country, and it was all Charleston style food, Low Country bowls, you know. Uh, shrimp and grits, those type of yes. things. This next one is called a juke joint Saturday night, and it's food from the Mississippi Delta. Now this um, is different, uh, different every, hours, different times. Yeah, this is a, usually than on your a, regular. Yeah, it's usually a Saturday night. We put out big, huge tables in all, Garland. In Garland, um, I had a food writer comment the last one that he was at. Uh, he said, in a million years, I would have never guessed I was in Garland. He said, I would have sworn I was in Charleston or Raleigh. How'd they get on that email list? Just go to our website and sign up. It's super simple. Um, you don't get any spam from us. And when you see the, I send out a reminder, hey, this is our next date. But when the menu comes out, don't wait. Go ahead and have how many tickets do you, you email need. back or do you call? We ca You call in. Um, and we basically, when we release the menu, it's all hands on deck. We have phones ringing everywhere. Uh, it's pretty amazing. I can imagine. Um, you know, but these are really elaborate, big menus. And a lot of places, if you go to Raleigh or you go to Wilmington, you get to try one thing. Yeah. Um, but here, with us, you get to try everything. It's, it's truly just, a smorgasbord. And it is all you can eat. But we, I took it, I adapted it from the old Southern Supper Clubs, yeah. where you would everybody would show up yeah. at somebody's house. The whole community. And that's, and that's how we want it to feel. We, we want everybody to be there. You're going to be at Live After Five this year? Every, with the, with the Southern Smoke Food Truck. Uh, Live After Five this year. Yes, And, and that comes up May 20th, and I just mentioned that very quickly because folks need to get in uh, their registration. They want to be a sponsor of that Absolutely. show by We're April excited. 20th. So, that's such uh, a fun event It is, for and us. you get a lot of the, the community. I want to touch on some of the, the, the menu items. I, you know, when I look at the menu, and this is just... Um, unbelievable, but everything from uh, beef fillet and coffee, and I, I mean, some of the things I can't Carolina Blanco chicken, pork bellied, uh, baked beans, uh, obviously Cajun black eyed peas, uh, pea salad. Um, and, and I saw somewhere on here um, uh, cheese uh, sandwich, um, double Micro grilled. Yeah. I mean, and, and these things uh, bacon, uh, bacon and white wine braised cabbage yes sir you know i mean it's his names that you see if if you go to s some high-end restaurants you might right. see unique kinds of names like this but but why can't you do that in garland or why yeah, exactly you know why can't you do it in a barbecue place mm -hmm. um but a lot of those the stars of the show are the farmers that grow it yeah Blueberry told, cobbler, I mean, come on, yeah, they don't like yeah, it. Yeah, and the bread puddings. Yeah. I mean, we have, I don't know, I think there's 15 bread puddings. Yeah, pickled watermelon, right? And I'm just, When was the last folks, time you ate pickled watermelon? I mean, exactly. It was 30, I heard of years it probably, ago. probably 40 yeah. years. Yeah. Um, you know, and I like for people, you know, our menu at the restaurant is chalkboard menu. So I like when you walk in, you say, wait a minute, you got pickled watermelon running yeah, today? Yeah, never heard, I've, I've heard yeah, of it, but yeah. Yeah, and that's me pushing me pushing, you pushing know, the limits. Pushing the limits. I mean, poor. And millennials look at that. I know they had never heard. You know, yeah, probably never heard of. Foodie, and that is a social media thing too. Yeah. That's why we have such a large following all over the South. Is because we're doing what we're doing, where we are. When does the food truck start? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> putting you on the spot uh, with that one. I'm hoping the food truck, the first food truck, real food truck event, will be the first live after five. Okay. Um, okay. It is taken. A little bit longer to get going because I want to do it right, and we don't do anything real fast. Yeah. Um, but when so, you get, when you get it done, it's perfection. Absolutely, and I'm really excited about that. We're going to work with the farmers market and local farmers. You know, that's that's one of our our big things. I got to mention this: scorched jalapeno pimento cheese. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm just throwing some things out, folks. And listen, this is the kind of thing on Wednesday and Thursday or Thursday and Garland? Thursday and Friday. Thursday and Friday in Garland. Go. Be there early. Yeah, you need to be there at 11. Um, our line usually starts 11, 11, 15. And we may be sold out as quickly as 1 o'clock. Uh, it's, it's pretty unheard of. And it's amazing. It's amazing in a town of Garland, you know, the town the size of Garland that we're doing it. Matthew, I want to thank you for your time coming in. Uh, we wish you continued success. 
and uh, we'll be giving you a shout out. Anything we can do to, to support you on this show, we're glad to thank do it. You. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us today. We look forward to seeing you again next week on the radio, and may God bless. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of We Should Know with host J.W. Simmons. If you have a question, comment, or suggestion regarding this or any episode, please send your emails to we should know edu at gmail.com. And remember to tune in every Tuesday at 2.30 for another informative episode of We Should Know.